God has provided us angelic help as we fight and wage the spiritual battle. You're not in it alone. Not only do we have the person of God, we have the staff of God. Because angels are fundamentally God's staff. They are the ones through whom God has chosen to execute his historical plan. Hebrews chapter 1 is really the most comprehensive chapter on the angelic conflict. It is dealing with angels and placing them in their proper perspective relative to Christ. He makes a statement in verse 14 by saying, And are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Are they, referring to the angels, references in verse 13, are they angels, not ministering spirits, servants of God, sent out, that is, they are sent out by God to render service, to act on the behalf of those and for the sake of those who inherit salvation. Now that's going to become an important phrase as we go along, that the job of angels is to serve, to serve you and me, the inheritors of salvation. That you and I have available to us an invisible army, massive, two-thirds of all the angels ever created still work for God, one-third jump ship, and followed Satan in his rebellion, which lets you know the power of persuasion that Satan has, that men would give up God to follow the devil. But he is saying that we have available to us an army. They are sent out as needed by God to minister, to serve those who are inheritors of salvation. Now with that verse in mind, turn to John 1, St. John chapter 1. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, where we have a story that we have referenced that I want to spend a little bit more time on, and that is the saga of Nathaniel. Philip, verse 45, finds Nathaniel and says to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets spoke, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We found the prophesied Messiah. Nathaniel said, you got to be kidding. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Wait a minute, you say the Messiah is from Nazareth? Nathaniel said, I've been around here a long time and I haven't seen anything good come out of Nazareth yet. Philip said, don't take my word for it, come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming. So Nathaniel is on his way to Jesus and said to him, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Here's an honest, non-deceitful fellow. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? We've never met before. Jesus answered and said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now that'll ruin your day. All right? Not only do I know you, I saw you before Philip ever told you to come see me, even though I wasn't in the vicinity of the fig tree. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. What will you see because of your statement of faith? He said, truly, truly. That means, uh, some, you know, if you have King James, it probably reads, surely, surely. If you want to put it in another kind of English, it means for real, for real. <laughs> or show enough, show enough. That means you can bank on this one. 
truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He tells Nathaniel, because of your affirmation, you're going to see heavenly activity occurring in your life and in before your very eyes, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, I want to look at the story a little bit and its implications. Jesus sees Nathanael coming and says, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Nathanael says, well, how do you know me? Well, when you were sitting under the fig tree, I not only know you, I know where you were, what you were doing, sitting under the fig tree, and I also know what you were thinking. Now, this becomes very important because what catches Nathaniel is what Jesus says. Jesus says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile, no deceit. Now why does that grab Nathaniel so much? Well, I'll tell you why it grabs him. It grabs Nathaniel because Jesus has just told him what he was thinking about under the fig tree. How do we know that Jesus just told him what he was thinking about under the fig tree. Well, it all revolves around the word guile. You see, this statement of a ladder or of Jesus where angels are ascending up and down is really from a story in the Old Testament. Hold your finger here and turn to Genesis chapter 28. Let's look at the story or what Nathaniel is thinking about when Jesus says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Genesis chapter 28. Verse 10, And Jacob departed from Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place called Haran. And he had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. Now, if you hold your finger here and go back to John, what does Jesus tell Nathaniel he will see? He's telling him, you're going to see exactly what Jacob saw when Jacob was resting and relaxing in Genesis 28. What did Jacob see? Jacob saw angels ascending and descending on this heavenly staircase in Genesis chapter 28. He tells this New Testament Christian now that you're going to see what Jacob saw. And if you know the story, Jacob was a man of much guile. He was the deceiver. Ever since he came out of his mama's womb, he was deceiving. He deceived Esau of his birthright. He deceived his father, making his father think he was Esau rather than Jacob because his father had problems seeing. He was nearly blind. He deceived his father-in-law. He was a deceiver, and his deceptions were catching up with him. In Genesis chapter 28, God, in an act of sovereign grace, lets him get a view of heaven and lets him know, lets Jacob know, that I am going to be with you. In John 1, Nathaniel is sitting under the tree, meditating on Jacob and meditating on this story. Jesus says, unlike Jacob, you're not a deceiver. Nathaniel knows exactly what he's talking about because that's exactly what Nathaniel is thinking. So Nathaniel has an immediate question, how do you know me? You, you don't know me or my people. You do not know me. Jesus says, oh, yes, I do. I know who you are. I know what you're thinking. And because you believe me, because I told you this, you're going to see what Jacob saw. You're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. 
Now what's very interesting, you can't see it in the English, but the Greek tells us, in verse 51, Jesus says you and says it plural. I say to you, you plural shall see the heavens open. We'll return to today's message in just a moment. He was a good boy. He was. He was a good child coming up. He had his little doings, sne little sneaky things, but nothing too drastic. I didn't have much trouble out of the when he was coming up. I really didn't. Anthony has difficulty in expressing himself orally. He does not think before he speaks. Anthony's still very impatient. Yells when he should be talking softly. Jumps out of his seat and shakes hands furiously to be called upon. He still waves his hands before ever listening to the question. <laughs> Can you relate to that? Yes. Encourage him to get his thoughts together before he attempts to express himself. He likes to show his experiences. And I used to tell them all, uh, tell my children when they were coming up, you don't have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an Indian chief. Just be a good citizen. Whatever you do, just be good at it. You have a unique fingerprint that identifies you. You're different. God doesn't cancel out who you are to use you. He takes who you are apart from sin to use you. So some people are, are, are reticent. They're background people. Some people are out front. Their personalities are, are more A-type personalities. That's okay. Nothing wrong with those differences. Let God use you like he made you. return to today's message. Now this is in the Greek text. Why is that important? This is important because Nathaniel isn't the only person who can get to see this. You and I, if we are like Nathaniel, can get to see what was promised to Nathaniel, which is the activity of heaven operating on our behalf by virtue of God's angelic host. In other words, this story to Nathaniel and this promise to Nathaniel isn't only for Nathaniel, it's good for you and me. When God made this promise to Jacob, which is the foundation of the story that we're discovering here in John chapter 1, let's look at some of the things that came with it. So let's flip right back to Genesis 28 and let's look. He says to him after he sees this supernatural event, this ladder, this ladder that was on earth with its top reaching to heaven. Let me say a word about that. The ladder was on earth, but its top reached to heaven. If you and I are going to be spiritually successful on earth, we must have access to heaven. Because remember, everything that happens on earth is precipitated by something that has preceded it that has already happened in heaven. So if you are going to have on earth that which gives you victory here, it must come from a connection that you have in heaven. We all say it's not what you know, but what? Who you know, all right? Same thing when it comes to the spiritual life. It's not only what you know, it is also who you know. This ladder that is on earth is ascending up into heaven. The problem with many of us is we either don't have a ladder, have a ladder, don't know where the ladder is, or have a ladder, know where the ladder is, but don't have the strength to get to the top. Okay? The connection is that what's on earth must link you to what's in heaven. And when Jacob was told this, God gave him, this is very important, a promise. He said... Verse 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. 
the land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. Your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. Your descendants and the family of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I will be with you. I will keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord has been in this place, and I didn't even know it. You know, that's bad when the Lord is around and you don't know he's there. All right? Jacob discovers that he's been with God. And this wasn't just a dream. God was making a supernatural disclosure of himself. Now, let me tell you what comes with the ladder. All right? When you understand the ladder, and we're going to go into it a little bit in just a moment, but let me understand what you get when you get this ladder. The ladder that Jacob saw, the ladder that Nathaniel was promised, but not only Nathaniel, the rest of the disciples, including you and me, are promised when we are in right relationship. Four things come with the ladder, all right? First of all came God's promise with the ladder. He said, I will keep my promise and give my promise to you. Many of us are living defeated because we don't know the promises of victory God has given us. With the latter also came God's presence. God was in the place, and I didn't know it. Let me say that again. God was there, and I didn't even know it. Because Jacob was not spiritually sensitive until after this event. God was here. Unlike Nathaniel, Nathaniel said, God is here and I know it. Okay? God is here and I know it. With God came not only his promise, but his presence. Not only that, but his protection, I will keep you, he told Jacob. That's his protection. Let me tell you something, when heaven is properly linked to earth, this is why you can relax. Because when heaven is properly linked to earth, or better yet, earth, your life, is properly linked to heaven, nothing can happen to you outside of God's will. Did you hear that? Nothing can happen to you outside of God's will. When you are in God's will, he will keep you for whatever he has for you. The fourth thing, God gives his promises, his presence, his protection, but he also gives his provision. If you look at 1 Kings, just turn back a little bit. We look at the, the forerunner, chapter 19 of 1 Kings, the forerunner of Elisha which was Elijah, and uh, you may recall I mentioned about how this woman had him on a run, Jezzy, <laughs> Bell, okay? Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me even more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow this time. Put it another way, you got 24 hours to live, boy. You're a dead man, okay? Now, Elijah wasn't scared of all them prophets, but this woman wore him out, okay? Verse 3, now he was afraid and arose and ran for his life. That's interesting. He didn't run from all them prophets. 800 prophets of Baal, but this one sister got him trucking, Okay? And came to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Now this is pretty bad. So he's ready to die. He lay down and slept under the juniper tree. And behold, there was an angel touching him. And he said, Arise, eat. Then he looked, and behold, there was at his head a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water, so he ate and drank and lay down again. 
And the angel of the Lord came again and a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. So let me feed you. Now look at verse 8. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights. Talk about angel food cake. <laughs> I mean, this is a biblical basis for angel food cake, folks. It was a bread cake. The angel baked the bread cake. Maybe this is where they got the phrase from, okay? The angel baked the bread cake, and it had supernatural power in it because the man didn't get hungry for 40 more days. This means that when you at your worst, he's suicidal. Not only can God take care of you, not only can he take care of you well, but he can keep you going for the length of time until he's ready to show you his next plan for your life. He can cover you from kibber to kibber, pillar to post, beginning to end. And he did it through his angel. He did it through his angel. Let me show you one other thing along this line. Matthew chapter 4. Remember Jesus with the devil? He tells the devil, no, be gone, Satan. Verse 11 of Matthew 4, and the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began ministering to him, feeding him, encouraging him, providing for him. One of the ways, believers, that you get heavenly prayers answered here on earth is through angelic staff. God says to whatever angel is responsible for your well-being, take care of him, meet that need. But you notice, in each case, even though they felt bad or were in difficult circumstances, they did a spiritual thing. Elisha prayed. Elijah was honest with God. I want to die, but at least he talked to God. Jesus just dealt with the word of God with Satan. Each one was spiritually attuned, even though they were having problems. If you have a difficulty, don't run from God. Run to God. So let's look at this. What are the conditions for God to let you see a ladder? To let you see his supernatural, angelically supported presence on earth from the precipice in heaven. If you're going to see heaven open up and the supernatural presence of God on your behalf through his angelic host, you're going to have to take seriously the word of God. He said, Nathaniel, because you believe, you will see. Now, in John chapter 1, there's also faith in God's son. Faith in God's son. Notice, he says, Jesus in verse 50, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? He says in verse 49, you are the son of God. His relationship to God's word, but also his relationship to God's son. Now this is very important, follow me. He confesses, he confesses a commitment to Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the King of Israel, which is the role of Messiah, and he confesses it openly. If there is no public representative of Christ in the world, then there will be no private blessing from Christ to you in the world. You cannot be a secret disciple and see heaven open. Now. The result of this message tonight is that some of you will take it seriously and begin to see heaven open and see a ladder. You'll see a connection happen between the unseen world and the seen world, between the invisible world and the visible world. Some of you are going to see heaven and earth come together and you're going to be able to testify that God intervened. When you do, Make sure in closing you do what Jacob did. Let me close in Genesis 28. You know what he did? When he saw heaven and earth come together for him, 
he worshiped. That's what he did. He worshiped. Verse 16, and Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. Now he's out under the stars. He says, no more. This is God's house. And this is the gate of heaven. Listen, when God comes through for you, don't wait till next Sunday to worship. Turn right wherever he came through for you, turn it into church. All right? Praise him where you are. Don't wait to praise him. When he comes through for you, you stop where you are and you praise him. Well, we hope you were blessed and challenged by today's message. And I hope it's created a thirst in you to know more about angels. Well, we're here to help quench that thirst. We have a CD series called Angels, Good, Bad, and Ugly. And you can get this CD series for a gift of any amount to the ministry of The Urban Alternative. Your gift will help us to continue ministering to you as well as minister to others. So as generous as you can be, contact us now at TonyEvans.org or call us at 1-800-800-3222 and get the CD series, Angels, Good, Bad, and Ugly. And when you order it, you'll get a free study guide that comes with it to help you to understand the biblical teaching on angels. Contact us right away. Thank you for your support and your prayers. We need both. Look forward to being with you again next time.